welcome back. Today we're checking out another amazingly accurate historical video by Bill Wirtz. This time it's the history of Japan. Really enjoyed the last video we did, the history of the entire world, and you guys told me that he did another one similar to it called the history of Japan. So let's go ahead and check that out. I'm sure it'll be a great time. Japan is an island by the sea filled with volcanoes and it's beautiful. In the year negative a billion, Japan might not have been here. In the year negative 40,000, it was here, and you could walk to it, and some people walked to it. Then it got warmer, some icebergs melted, it became an island, and now there's lots of trees. Because it's warmer. So now there's people on the island, they're basically sort of hanging out in between the mountains, eating nuts off trees, and using the latest technology, like stones and bowls. Ding dong, it's the outside world, and they have technology from the future, like really good metal from and the crazy future. rice farms. Now you can make a lot of rice really, really quickly. That means if you own the farm, you own a lot of food, which is something everybody needs to survive. So that makes you king. Rice farming and rice kingdoms spread across the land, all the way to here. The most important kingdoms were here, 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 and here. But this one was the most, most important, ruled by a heavenly super person, or emperor for short. Knock, knock, get the door, it's religion. The new prince wants everyone to try this hot new religion. Knock, knock, religion. Please try this religion, he said. No, said everybody. Try it, he said. No, said everybody again, quieter this time. And so the religion was put into place, and all the rules that came with it. Then the government was taken over by another clique, and they made some reforms, like making the government govern more, and making the government more like China's government, which is a government that governs more. Hi, China, they said. <laughs> Hi, dipshit, said China. Can you call us something else other than dipshit, said Japan. Like what, said China. How about Sunrise Land, said Japan. And they stole China's alphabet and wrote a book about themselves. And then they made lots of poetry and art and another book about themselves. Then they stopped moving the capital every time the emperor died and kept it in one place for a while. Yeah, I can't believe that was a thing. <laughs> just every time they would just move it and you're like, guys, come on. Can we not just have a centralized place? Right here. And they conquered the north finally. Get that squared away. A rich hipster named Kukai is bored with modern Buddhism, visits China, and learns a better version, which is more spiritual. Comes back, reinvents the alphabet, and causes art and literature to be great for a long time. And the royal palace turned into such a dream world of art that they really didn't give a shit about running the country. So if you live outside the palace, how are you supposed to protect your shit from criminals? Hire a samurai. <laughs> Everyone started hiring samurai. Rich, important people hired samurai. Poor people who could not afford to hire samurai did not hire samurai. Absolutely. Yeah, no, yeah. You didn't hire a samurai unless you had that gold, baby. Uh, or, or you know, silver, whatever. Um, some form of currency, definitely. Uh, most samurais worked for some kind of uh, regional lord or governor, something along those lines. The samurai became organized and powerful, more powerful than the government. So they made their own military government. Here, they let the emperor still be emperor, but the shogun is actually in control. Breaking news, the Mongols have invaded China. We've invaded China, said the Mongols. Please respect us or else we might invade you as well. Okay, said Japan. So the <laughs> Mongols came over ready for war and died in a tornado. But they tried again and had a nice time fighting with the Japanese, but then died in a tornado. Then the emperor overthrows the shogunate. Then the shogunate overthrows him back and moves to Kyoto and makes a new shogunate. And the emperor can still dress like an emperor if he wants. That's fine. Now there's more art. Like painting with less colors, collaborative poetry, plays, monkey fun, tea parties, gardening, architecture. Uh, I gotta give it to Japan. Um, their art and their architecture and a lot of their aesthetic design is just gorgeous. Like... Never been to Japan, but would love to visit someday. It just seems like they have a lot of just gorgeous culture. Like, it's it's really impressive. Flowers. It's time for who's going to be the next shogun. Usually it's the shogun's kid, but the shogun doesn't have a kid. So he tries to get his brother to quit being a monk and be the next shogun. He says, okay, but then the shogun has a kid. So now who's it going to be? Vote now on your phones. And everyone <laughs> voted so hard that the palace caught on fire and burned down. The shogun actually didn't care. He was off somewhere doing poetry. And the whole country broke into pieces. Everyone is fighting with each other for local power. And it's anybody's game. Knock, knock. It's Europe. No, they're not here to take over. They just want to sell some shit. Like clocks. And guns. And Jesus. So that's cool. But everyone's still fighting each other for control. Now... Was it, uh... Was it Matthew Perry that forced... Forced, uh, Japan into trade with, um, Western culture? with guns, and wouldn't it be nice to control the capital, which right now is puppets, with no one controlling them. 
This clan is ready to make a run for it, but first they have to trample this smaller clan, which is in the way. Surprise, the smaller clan wins. Yeah, baby Oda, right? Is that, uh, it's, uh, Nobunaga? And the leader of that clan steals the idea of invading the capital and invades the capital. And it goes very well. He's about halfway through conquering Japan when someone who works for him kills him. And then someone else who works for him kills them. And that guy finishes conquering Japan. And then he confiscated everybody's swords and made some rules. And now I'm going to invade Korea and then hopefully China, he said, and failed, and also died. But before he died, he told these five guys to take care of his five-year-old son until he's old enough to be the next ruler of Japan. And the five guys said, yeah, right. It's not going to be this kid. It's going to be one of us because we're grown-ups. And it's probably going to be this guy who happens to be way more rich. And oh, yeah, Tokugawa. Um, the Tokugawa shogunate. They, he was around for a while. Powerful than the others. A lot of people support him, but a lot of people support not supporting him. They have a fight, and he wins and starts a new government right here. And he still lets the emperor dress like an emperor and have very nice things. But don't get confused. This is the new government, and they are very strict. So strict they close the country. No one can leave, and no one can come in. Except for the Dutch, if they want to buy and sell shit. But they have to do it right here. Now that the entire country was not at war with itself, the population increased a lot. Business increased, schools were built, roads were built, everyone learned to read, books were published, there was poetry, plays, sexy times, puppet shows, and Dutch studies. People started to study European science from books they bought from the Dutch. We're talking geography, skeletons, physics, chemistry, astronomy, and maybe even electricity. Over time, the economic and cultural prosperity began to gradually slow down. Here it is, I'm pretty sure this is it, right? Uh, Commodore Matthew Perry? 1800s came in and forced the Japanese into trading with them. Knock, knock. It's the United States with huge boats, with guns, gunboats. Open the country. Stop having it be closed, said the United States. There was really nothing they could do, so they signed a contract that lets United States, Britain, and Russia visit Japan anytime they want. Choshu and Satsuma hated this. That sucks, they said. This sucks. And with almost very little outside help, they overthrew the shogunate and somehow made the emperor the emperor again. With almost very little outside help, <coughs> Britain. Again, and moved him to Edo, which they renamed Eastern Capital. They made a new government, which was a lot more Western. They made a new constitution that was pretty Western, and a military that was pretty Western. And do you know what else is Western? That's right, it's conquering stuff. So what can we conquer? Yep. Korea. Here we go, boys. <laughs> Here comes Japan conquering most of Asia. <laughs> Just inexplicably. They conquer Korea, taking it from its previous owner, China, and then go a little bit further. And Russia rushes in out of nowhere and says, Stop, no, you can't take that. We were going to build a railroad through here to try to get some warm water. And Russia builds their railroad, supervised by a shit ton of soldiers. And then when the railroad was done, they downgraded to a fuck ton. Did I say downgrade? I meant upgrade. And Japan says, Can you maybe chill? And Russia says, How about maybe you chill? Japan is kind of scared of Russia. You'll never guess who's also kind of scared of Russia. Great Britain. So Japan and Great Britain make an alliance together so they can be a little less scared of Russia. Feeling confident, Japan goes to war against Russia, just for a moment, and then they both get tired and stop. It's time for World War One. The world is about to have a war, because it's the 1900s and weapons are yeah, getting buddy. crazy, and all these empires are excited to try them out on each other. Meanwhile, Japan has been enjoying conquering stuff and wants more. And the next thing on our <laughs> list is this part of China and lots of tiny islands. More. <laughs> All that stuff belongs to Germany, which just had war declared on it by Britain because Britain was friends with Belgium, which was being trespassed by Germany in order to get to France to kick France's ass because France is friends with Russia, who was getting ready to kick Austria's ass because Austria was getting ready to kick Serbia's ass because someone from Serbia shot the leader of Austria's ass. Her oh man, what a convoluted series of events, right? Uh, Archduke, Archduke Ferdinand was the guy who was assassinated at the start of World War I. Or actually, he shot him in the head. And Britain is currently friends with Japan. So you know what that means. Duh, Japan should take the island. Free stuff! Which they wanted to do anyway. So they called Britain on the telly to sort of let them know. And then they did it. And they also helped Britain a little here and there with some errands and stuff. Now the war is over. And congratulations, Japan. You technically fought in the war, which means you get to sit at the negotiating table with the big dudes. Where they did. <laughs> my goodness. Look at him. Wedged way over into the corner. You can barely even see him. <laughs> decided who owns what. And yes, Japan gets to keep all that shit they stole from Germany. You also get to join the post-war mega alliance, the League of Nations, whose mission statement is to try not to take over the world. Fast forward to World War II and... The Great Depression <laughs> is bad, and Japan's economy is now crappy, but the military is doing just fine, and it invades Manchuria. And the League of Nations is like, no, don't do that. If you're in the League of Nations, you're not supposed to take over the world. And Japan said, how about I do anyway? <laughs> 
Japan invaded more and more and more and more of China and was planning to invade the entire East. You've got mail. It's from Germany, the new leader of Germany. He has a cool mustache and he's trying to take over the world and needs friends. This also got forwarded to Italy. They all decided to be friends because they had so much in common. It's time for World War II. Here we go, Germany boys. Germany is invading the neighbors. Then they invade the neighbors' neighbors. Then the neighbors' neighbors' neighbors who happened to be Britain said, holy shit. And the United States started helping Britain because they are good friends. And started not helping Japan because they're friends and our friends are not friends. Plus they're planning on invading the entire ocean. The United States is also working on a large, very huge bomb. Bigger than any other bomb. Ever. Just in case. But they still haven't joined the war. Just war looks case. bad on TV. And the United States is really starting to care about their image. But then Japan spits on them in Hawaii and challenges them to war. And they say yes. And then Germany, as a symbol of friendship, declares... I mean, potentially one of the biggest mistakes in military history was... Uh, attacking Pearl Harbor and causing a major superpower to declare war on you when they were neutral. They were perfectly content to sit on the sidelines and only help with money and equipment, but you had to go and just poke the sleeping giant, didn't you? There's war in the United States also. So the United States goes to war in Europe, and they help the gang chase Germany back into Germany, and they also start chasing Japan back into Japan. And they haven't used the bomb yet and are curious to see if it works. So they drop it on Japan. Boom! It works! They actually drop two. And then they said, Okay, we're done! <laughs> we give up! <laughs> Did you guys know that there was one man who was in both cities when they got hit with the atomic bomb and he survived both of them. One guy survived two only nuclear attacks in history and he survived both of them. Talk about an incredible, incredible luck, incredible. Well, some would say he was incredibly unlucky, but good Lord. You win. The United States installed a new government, inspired by the United States government, with just the right ingredients for a post-war economic miracle. And Japan starts making TVs, VCRs, automobiles, and camcorders as fast as they can, and also better than everybody else. And it was crazy because after World War II, unlike a lot of our previous opponents that we fought in World Wars, they immediately saddled up right next to us and was like, okay, well... We're going to hitch on to America's economy and just take off with them. And that's exactly what they did. They became incredibly economically successful after World War II. That typically doesn't happen for the losers of a war. Typically, they're pretty focused on paying back war debts and rebuilding their own country and other countries. So Japan actually got off pretty lucky when it comes to post-war stuff. They get rich and the economy goes wild and then the miracle wears off. But everything's still pretty cool, I guess. Bye. Oh, okay. Well, that ended uh, rather abruptly, but okay. I mean, Japan is still around. They're still kicking. They're still a country and they're allies now. So... And I think we can all agree that we've enjoyed something from Japan, right? Whether it's one of their tasty treats or one of their animes, television shows, uh, electronic devices, video games. I mean, they're all over the place. And uh, frankly, I feel like there has always been this back and forth between America and Japan where America will invent something. Right? They'll invent a, a car, a television, uh, an electronic device. And Japan says, okay, well, we're going to take this thing that you invented and we're going to improve it. We're going to make it more efficient. We're going to make it smaller. And it's basically just been like that with everything, right? All, all of our electronics, typically the U.S. invents them and then Japan improves them. Vehicles, same thing. U.S. invented them. Japan improved them like that's we just we have this symbiotic relationship with them now um especially with technology and we just go back and forth improving the technology with each other and it's turned out great for everyone involved frankly once again great video by Bill Wirtz I love these short 
quick, educational, yet somewhat humorous, uh, kind of like historical blurb videos. I, I, I really, really enjoy these, and uh, I wish he had more of them. That... <laughs> That'd be great. Uh, I'd love to see a video like this for every country. That'd be amazing. But overall, I love these things. Love reacting to them. And I hope you guys love them too. If you did, go ahead and click that like button. Go ahead and click that subscribe button too if you haven't already. It really helps me out. And leave a comment down below. Let me know what other videos we should check out. Maybe there's some other cool historical things like this that we could check out. As always, guys, thanks so much for stopping by. Thanks for watching the video. Take care of yourselves and have a great day.